is this. We bless and honor God this morning, this culture of eroticism. Amen. We know we're living in that time. We pray that everyone uh, that was under the sound of our voice earlier, those that were listening in on our morning uh, tape this morning, our CD, it was previously um, ministered uh, quite some time ago, but the word is still prevalent and the word still is the word of God. And so we honor God this morning for his word. We thank and praise God for one. We say grace and peace to one and grace and peace to all. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Truly, I will bless his holy name. Privilege and an honor to be here yet once again. It's just another day that the Lord has kept us. And we thank God for his saving grace and his keeping power. We thank God that he is a keeper. He will keep you if you want to be kept. And the Bible lets one to understand that he will keep us at perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And I don't know about you, but I have a, a, a belief in God that my mind is going to be stayed on God. In God I live, in God I move, and in God I have my being. And so we honor God yet once again this morning for his righteousness, the grace and mercy that he has bestowed upon us as believers. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We thank God that we have been liberated. We've been redeemed by the blood. <clears throat> they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. And so we bless and honor God yet once again today. We pray that you had a beautiful weekend. We pray that you did some things and got some things established and accomplished that, that were done in your life. Those things that bring happiness to your life. Those things that bring a completeness to your life. And those things that are amplified in a good way and not in a negative way. Amen. It's just too much negativity already. So we're praying that. Those blessings of the Lord that make him more rich and he added no sorrow. So let that be made manifest in your life. And not all those negative things. It's easy to find the negativity. But it's hard to just look on the positive things. It's hard to just not always talk about uh, those things that are right in the forefront. You know, those things that make an impression upon our lives. We're going to always talk about that. <clears throat> That's easily found and easily said and easily spoken about. But if we could just concentrate on those things that are good for us and positive, and we pray, God, that you had a good weekend, and we pray that you found some positive things to do and uh, things in life itself, even life itself, that you did some better things in life. And uh, you went out and had some fun and did some things that brought enjoyment and excitement to you and come out of that normal routine. <clears throat> so we just honor God this morning. We do pray that you went to the church of your choice, the place of worship that you would go in and uh, the power of God would have met you there. There's always a nugget somewhere, so you've just got to try to find that nugget. You've got to go inside the recesses of your heart and see exactly what it is that God is speaking to you. We always say on this prophetic prayer line that God is still speaking, but are we still listening? And so we have to listen and fine-tune our ears to hear in the Holy Ghost what God has to say to the church. And the Bible talks about in the book of Revelation, he says... Um, he is Alpha, he is Omega, he is beginning, he is end. And let them hear what he has to say to the church, what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to the church. The church are the ecclesia, the church are the called out ones, and we are those. It's not your uh, building, it's not your man-made monstrosity, uh, it's not the brick and mortar, but it is us, the temple, our bodies, the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so we thank God that God is still speaking to us, and we align ourselves with what God has to say to us, and we intentionally obey God. It's our greatest intention to make sure that heaven is our home. It's our intentions that even when we slumber and when we sleep, even when we fall, we have a God that will always be able to pick you up, turn you around, and place those feet back on solid ground. And so we thank God for the solidarity, the union that we have in God. We ask God that he would bind us together like that threefold cord, for we do know that a threefold cord is not easily broken. If you want the tape that you heard this morning uh, uh, prior to me coming on, that was a tape, a uh, CD entitled A Culture of Eroticism a culture of eroticism, and you can get it in its entirety if you so desire. Call our admin line at 407-545-1133, and you can uh, order that if you'd like. we got a lot of CDs that we really minister the Word of God to, and so if you want to be a part of that, put it in your library. Why, surely we would afford you that opportunity to place that in your library as well. We bless and honor God once again on this prayer line. This is your life support line, and God filters down those nutrients on a continual that are necessary to keep us to hold us and to grip us and to mold us and to make us. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And this is what we're doing on God's uh, prayer line. It's God's prayer line. And we thank God that he's afforded you the opportunity to be a part of this life support line, that those nutrients that are necessary 
He filters them out on a daily basis, on a continual. And he gives us something totally new each and every day. The Bible declares he daily loads us with his benefits. And so we thank God that he has new benefits today that were different than on Friday when we left. He has benefits today that are different than on yesterday. And so we thank him for that, what he's going to enrich our lives with on today. And we honor him for what he is doing. And we pray that also that you would share the page this morning. If you'd be so kind as to share this page on our Facebook Live, if you would just press that button down in the bottom and press share at this time, we'd appreciate it so very much. Amen. We pray for those that are on our YouTube Live. You go ahead and um, those, those that are uh, subscribing, make sure that you uh, bring in others as well to subscribe to our YouTube page. And of course, those on our prophetic prayer line, you know what our assignment is. Our assignment is to make sure that we pass out this prayer line number to as many people as possible. God made us a promise. He said, if you pass out the prayer line number, as many people you give that number out to, that's how many blessings he's going to release upon your life. And so we, I think we can stand some blessings. What do you think? I do believe that we can allow the Father to bless us and know the different ways <clears throat> excuse me, that he will want to bless us. And so let's receive those blessings that God has for us in the way in, in which he would want to release them in our lives. And that's just by being obedient, by just giving out the prayer line number. The world itself and what we know now has uh, in need of a, a God, a God of our salvation, the real God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so this is the place where God wants to uh, put us all in a place that they can receive the realness of who God is, the tangibleness of our God, that anointing that destroys yokes in their lives. And we believe in God. <clears throat> we thank and praise God for that. <clears throat> you all pray for us that we're trying to be a little bit under the weather, but we're going to fight through it anyway. Amen. And we're going to just push through it, push past those things that in our life. And I bless God for it as well. <clears throat> Those of you that are on our prayer line, make sure you all keep me abreast as to what's going on with those phone lines, and we appreciate it so much. Our lines cut, cut in and out sometimes, and we're not aware of it. Uh, we've got several different devices going simultaneously, and so we bless God for what God is doing in our lives. <clears throat> I want to minister to you this morning according to the Word of God, what God has given us, want to minister to those that are on our prophetic prayer line today, <clears throat> what God has given us to um, minister to your spirit, man, and to assist you in areas, in, in uh, dynamics in, in areas in your life in which those things can't be so overwhelming to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I find that younger people are in situations now that they are faced with a lot of things that we were not faced with when we were uh, at their age. Um, things are happening now that are, are really changing life as we know it. And they've got so many social medias. They've got so many outlets. They've got so many different avenues in which they are uh, pulled away from their real purpose of what God has designed for them, and they're really not even knowing it. Uh, this is why we named it this morning, uh, the title also, A Culture of Eroticism. Uh, we, we're in a position now where life um, presents things to us, the younger ones, pretty much, and then I guess everybody's buying into it, but it's for the most part, it's a, a real task for the younger people to be sucked in and lured into the social media aspect. When I first looked at social media being so prevalent in the lives of so many, I looked at something that probably could have been a positive, but there are so many angles and so many directions that the enemy would take it in that those things that were supposed to be a positive, it is now uh, somewhat a, a negative. Uh, anything can always have a negative connotation behind it. Uh, it's according to your faith be it unto you. It's according to what you buy into. It's according to how you look at a thing, and it's according to what you establish in that thing uh, when it's going set forth in your life. So we always see that there are things that have been sent against us, and, and, and it can be a positive or it can be a negative. It's according to how you use it. It's according to how you implement it. When, when I looked at social media, when they pulled me into it yet once again, and, and you know, I'm always hesitant about all of these things. I, I always look at things spiritual. I don't just look at it as a natural, but I look at it as a spiritual aspect as to see why. Why is it here? And, and what, what uh, opportunities does it have to afford us to produce the kingdom of God? and his righteousness and whatever we utilize. And so I'm one that I don't really jump on a bandwagon so readily. I'm not one to buy into fads and, and neither do I go in where the crowd goes in. I sit back and I look and I examine others and I see exactly their participation in it and what for whatever reason why they're there. And so when I began to look at this social media thing called Facebook and other uh, Instagram, Snapchat, um, whatever it is they have out there, all the uh, social <clears throat> areas in which we can utilize social media. 
it could be a real positive thing and I, I believe those that have the uh, ideas when they first started it they did it in a uh, simplicity of just being able to join people together from uh, entire uh, backgrounds and diversities of backgrounds and people you went to school with and maybe even getting in uh, con contact with your relatives and your lost loved ones and it was a real real beautiful concept but anything that's good the enemy is always going to come in it anything that has been sent for good Satan is always going to show up we, we know the prima facie evidence of that is that what in the, the Garden of Eden as soon as God made man perfect he perfected man in his image and his likeness then the enemy came in he came right there at that place to do what to put an admixture in that where God had never intended and God told him, he said, and I'm going to give you this land. He, he bought land for uh, Adam. And he, he bought him, purchased land for him, gave it to him free, no charge. Uh, gave, gave him the title, everything belongs to you. And then everything that comes on the land belongs to you as well. So he had title, he had entitlement, he had ownership, and it all belonged to him. And so God had given him what was necessary. He gave him his portion at that time. So the enemy comes in and lets him know that the boundaries that God has given him, are they really the boundaries? We really do have boundaries even in our social media. We've got boundaries in our lives. We've got boundaries where we just don't cross those lines. But it's such a thin line uh, that sometimes we get um, in places and position where those lines are blurred. We're in a position where do we really understand? Do we cross this line? Are there boundaries in our life? And so sometimes even that what was good, it now comes out to be bad. Uh, God had told Adam and Eve exactly what you're to do. This is ownership. You own the land. It belongs to you. All I need you to do is take care of it. Amen. And just uh, be be here and, and worship me. And so the devil came in and he put that question mark in, in Eve's spirit. And because of that question mark, she crossed that line. I think sometimes the enemy still yet presents those question marks to us right now. Those places in life that, uh, should I take this picture? Should I say these words? Am I to now uh, spew out of my mouth something that's aggravating, something because I'm upset, something because I'm disappointed? You ever looked on social media and see why people make the comments they make? I, I look sometimes and I say, well, well who are they venting at and, and who are they mad at and, 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 and who's going to benefit from the comments that people are making? Are, are you shooting at somebody? I, I found an analogy a um, long, long time ago. Uh, when I began to pastor and, and when we listen to others that have gone before us in, in ministry and they let you know that sometimes you don't preach from a personal place in your life, uh, that you're, you're trying to target one person in the congregation or maybe eventually you're trying to target one situation that happened within the congregation. And so if your topic is going to be that particular thing and only that person knows what you're talking about. If you a senior pastor, you're venting about something that happened in your church and everybody's not privy to what happened, but you know you want to target that person, you want to get back to Adam in your message, you may be uh, uh, letting that person know exactly what you're trying to say, but look at all the other innocent people, innocent bystanders that are sitting out there uh, that's going to be uh, affected by the words that you say. It's just like the analogy if you've got a shotgun. A shotgun has uh, what they call bucks or pellets in it, and the pellets in it, they don't just go in that one particular target. They spread themselves out. Once the trigger's been pulled, once that force has been sent out of that weapon, those pellets, they go everywhere. They, 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 they disperse themselves in every position in all types of ways. So anybody in the uh, area are going to be affected by those pellets. And so that's the same thing as our words, that we may be targeting one person. We may be thinking that we're just talking to that particular person, but everybody in the circumference and the radiance of, the, of that, that word also, they're going to be affected by those pellets as well. So we got to be real careful what we say. On social media, you've got people that are venting. You've got people that are saying things uh, in this particular culture that we're in right now. Uh, but who are you talking to? And who is it that you're trying to offend? And who is it that you're trying to get that message to? Well, that person that you're targeting, they're not the only one that's going to read that. They're not the only ones that it's going to affect. And so now you're even making enemies because people have a wrong impression about what you're saying. They got the wrong interpretation about your words. But you actually were talking to the person that knew who you were talking to, but everybody else got affected by that as well. So what we want to come away with today is be careful of what we say. Uh, the, the snares of our mouth. The society is in a position now that it changes your persona. It changes your um, your your concept in life. And if you get sucked into it, it's that scandal on that I always talk about, prayer line family. There's a preset trap that Satan has, and the body of Christ is not fully aware of it. We're not really privy to everything that Satan has for us. It's a scandal on. A scandal on is something that exists already. It's sent there to trap you in it, to put you in it, to hold you down, to keep you there, and it already exists. 
What it does is emotions, other things are in your life that it can pull you into that direction. It'll allow things, calamities, disasters, situations to happen whereby it knows that you're going to pull yourself right and gravitate yourself right to where it is because that's why it does it. It's set up that way. It's designed that way. It's orchestrated that way. And the devil is so cunning that he knows that it's going to work. So he puts a trap right in front of you. And then you'll, you'll do things in life that, that he knows is going to motion you right there. And you fall right into that trap. And he says, now nah, I got him right where I want him. A, a culture of eroticism. We're living in a time right now that people themselves want to be, um, they, they want what I call um, validated. Uh, people want to be validated. And if you look at it in a way where you won't get offended by my words this morning, but just listen to what I have to say and allow the presence of God and the spirit of God to minister to your spirit and not your flesh. You ever seen people that take a lot of selfies? And so what's the purpose of that? If you're really looking at people that take a whole lot of selfies, sometimes you're just excited about what you're doing and sometimes you just want to share with those. But if you ever look at that person that has, that takes a lot of selfies, uh, to me, there's something missing within that person. To me, there, there's something that they're trying to uh, be validated as, they're trying to be accepted as, they're trying to project themselves in a way in which they, they really don't feel good about themselves, but they're trying to put that thing out there that this is me, this is who I am, and I want you to accept me, I want you to see me, me, see me, see me, see me. Did I say see me? And so they have so much of themselves that have not been validated, that have not been uh, proven, I guess, by others as to that you're acceptable, that you're good, that we, we accept you who you are, we, we thank you for who you are, and you don't have to put yourself out there like that. There's an emptiness, there's a voidness, there's an incompleteness in that person's life that I think that they're really not uh, understanding and they really are not privy to the fact that when you put yourself out there like that so much, in social in social media so much in the eyes of others so much for others to want to behold you and, and be a part of your life and, and tell the stories and, and people take pictures of their breakfast and then they take pictures of their dinner then they take pictures of so what is it that's missing within you that you feel the need to share that much of your life with total strangers total people that you know nothing about I used to caution my spiritual daughters of the gospel that when they're on that social media thing and they're always posting, always posting, always posting, don't you know that people know your every move at that time? Don't you know that they have bought into every part of your life at that time that wherever you are, uh, one daughter used to say, well, I just got off of work and I'm on the bus now and I'm traveling home. Okay, so now the burglar knows exactly where you are. Uh, the one that's going to rob you knows exactly now uh, the transit uh, 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 transportation that you're on. They know if they know the bus route, if they can Google it and find out, well, this bus will be here at such and such a time. And so I'll position myself there that I can snatch their purse. I'll position myself there that when they get ready to put the key in their door, I'm going to be right there behind them. See, you, you don't understand what you're really doing. A lot of times we're setting ourselves up <clears throat> to be victimized. We're setting ourselves up in positions in which that if we had just really thought for a second, uh, why, why am I putting this on there? What, what is the need for somebody to know that you just got off of work? Now you're headed home. I'm on 22nd Street in about 15 minutes. I'll be on Fifth Avenue. I get off the subway. I get off and I change this. Why do we need to know that? And what is it within you that wants to share that much information with uh, people uh, because of acceptance? We want to be accepted in so many ways, and then sometimes we want to feel important. Sometimes when we got that platform, we take those platforms uh, and we utilize them to build our brand. We utilize them to build up a social media gathering, a social media following, a social media that I've got these many followers, and I've got these many people following me. i got these many people. Well, what is it that you're saying uh, that you need that many people to follow you? And what is it that, uh, that you're actually putting out there that you want the people to see that they want to follow you? What is it that you're giving? What is your brand now that you're putting out there that people uh, want to follow you? What are you saying so much so that you want to make an impression on people that they will follow you? I also find that in this particular era that we're in now, the social media can uh, make you or break you. Social media can make you or break you. It can build you up in a place where you can get all the monies from these people that are paying monies uh, for anybody to watch you on YouTube or paying monies to follow you on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, paying monies for you to get there. So most people want to do that. Well, you know, this is a lucrative place now. If I could just get that thing, if I could just get that little niche, if I got enough followers, they're going to give me a paycheck. And well, you maybe want to rethink that because even when you're branding yourself to get other followers, 
What are you actually doing for the kingdom of God? Is this bringing God glory to what you're doing in your life? Does it glorify God for the ladies that I see on these social medias with everything hanging out? Don't understand why they feel the need to put themselves in positions like that. Don't understand why they think they need to uh, um, expose their bodies like that. Even men, even men. It, it, it's the strangest thing, y'all. <laughs> social media is a strange buffet. I, I looked at sometimes when you accept where we are now in the position that you don't know everybody that you accept the friend request from. So I said, well, Lord, because we're on social media i can't probably i guess limit it now because people have friends that friends that have friends that if we're asking you to share then your friends are looking at it and so now we want to say yes i'll accept you yes i'll accept you now we've accepted and we get what we get all types of uh, pornography we get all types of vulgar uh pictures and i don't understand how social media can can cap you off on words that you say but these nasty pictures and these nasty photos and these nasty videos of all the type of sexy stuff that is going on sexual positions and all of this mess that you wouldn't think could go on social media uh, that's on there and it's acceptable and that's okay see that's what i'm telling you even that what was sent to be a positive it turns to be a negative because of the culture that we're in the culture of eroticism when people find that they're going to have a platform they're going to take full advantage of it i've never in my life seen so many uh scammers so many con people uh, until you get on social media everybody now let me give y'all a little nibbit how they do it if they start out by hello dear how are you uh go ahead and delete that person and block that person because you know that's a scammer the first thing they're going to come out of their mouth they're in that same little genre because it's probably somebody that's gotten somebody's identity and you see the picture there but it's those people that are in those cafes somewhere or even somebody in other countries that are pretending to be that person, uh, hello, my dear, or hello, how are you? All uh, those things like that, first thing you do, you better block that one because that's not somebody that you want. You probably want to be bothered with. There are so many people that take advantage of the social media, the manipulators, amen, somebody, the con people, the scammers, they're all out there on this social media. And so we as a body of Christ, we as believers, we'll pull into those things as well. There are so many scammers. I've listened to people talk about somebody uh, said that this was you and they asked me, to take my money to the bank and go and do this and do that. Well, why would you just talk to that person? Why would you listen to somebody on a social media that you really don't have no idea who it really is just because a profile was up there and they said who they say they are? Do you know for a fact that's that person? So if you really know that person for yourself, why don't you contact that person and say, listen, did you send me this information? Did you request me to do that? So why would I do it on social media if I've got your number, if I've got a way to contact you, if we're there? Amen, somebody. We have a way to communicate with each other other than social media. Why would you buy into a lot of somebody saying who they are on a social media uh, way and then you buy into that. So many people have been scammed. So many people have been duped. So many people have been tricked by people they have no knowledge of and say, well, well they said it was you. It, it came up on you as my friend. Yeah. But if you're my friend, then why would I offer you something on a social media aspect when I can communicate with you directly? See, this is what we find here in the body of Christ. God wants to communicate with us directly, but we go in so many other areas and so many avenues and we accept everything else but the way that God wants to speak to us, the way that God wants to present himself to us so we get lured into, we get trapped into uh, those things that God never intended for us to have. Social media can be one of the best tools that we can have to preach the gospel. <clears throat> it can be the best tool that we can have to just have your friends. It can be the best tool that one would ever have to communicate with those that you went to high school with, your college uh, graduate friends, uh, whatever reason it is, in a positive, in a positive. But anytime there's something that's sent for good, there's always negative behind it. You're going to always find the most uh, uh, influence of that, that, that particular thing is going to be of a negative. And, and it's strange how those that have that much time on their hand to create so much stuff, amen, to try to pull somebody in. They've got that much time on their hands. And then we, because we what? There's something missing in us and we're going to scroll scroll up and down the, the, the news feed. We're going to scroll up and down the Instagram. We're going to scroll up and down the Snapchat because we want to see what people are doing. We want to buy into their lifestyle. We want to make feel as if we are part of what they're doing. And, and so those are those things that are missing on the inside of us. This particular culture now that we're in, it's the designed by Satan. Your Bible lets one to understand that Satan is what? He's been sent here to kill, 
to steal, and to destroy. And so what we want to build, we want to build a nation with principles. We want to build a nation that has purpose. We want to build a kingdom people, a kingdom-minded people that won't be lured into and suckered into the deceptive devices that Satan has uh, for the particular uh, earth right now. And so this is why God cautions us. He said, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. We are of a different fold. We are of a different people. And the difference that we have to hold that standard. There's some standards that we are supposed to be accountable for, for God as Christians, that we don't do everything that everybody else does. Are you going to be perfect? Of course not. Are you going to always get it right? No, you're going to miss the mark quite a few times. But you strive for perfection, and those things that you have not perfected, you'll allow the power of God and his presence to do a work on the inside of you that will captivate you so much so that will validate you, that will affirm you, that will attest you, that will let you know who you are, that you don't have to now be validated by social media. If nobody ever likes a comment you make, if nobody ever follows you, know that you're following Jesus Christ. On the solid rock you stand, all other ground is sinking sand. So we are missing something in our lives that we really want others to validate us. We're missing something in our lives, the very fiber of who we really are, that we, we, we now buy into what somebody else says. Because they say they like it doesn't mean they like you. Because they press like on your statement doesn't mean they like it. Amen. But it, it satisfies something in us. It satisfies that thing that's been missing in us, that little fiber, that being that we really want to feel and those things that we want to uh, express ourselves with a way that they like me. It, it's just like when we were in high school. When you were in high school, you know you wanted to be the most popular. Same thing. It's the same thing going on right now. The popularity contest, I want to be the most popular one. I want for everybody to like me. And so have we not grown up beyond that yet? Have we not grown up past that, that, that same competitiveness, that same peer pressure? Do we still have peer pressure? And here we are, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, shall I revelate? Are we still in a place now that we have to be validated by others because we feel that this person is more like than we are? This person is more popular than what we are. This, poor purpose, this person here is more accepted than we are. So what part of you have you not really validated in Christ Jesus, knowing that he now has bought you with a price, knowing now now that he now has purchased you, redeemed you, he has released us from those objectives that this life had, this society had, and we, he said, the Bible says you owe no man nothing but to love him. Owe no man nothing but to love him. So you don't owe anybody anything about you now. You don't owe anybody any. Uh, information about you. Well, I graduated from cum laude. I graduated magnum cum laude. You better tell them I graduated help me laude. I graduated from the school of hard knocks. I graduated from the school of neology. But because we now, I feel your Holy Ghost. You can come on in now. Because we are now want to be accepted so much by society that we want for everybody to know what we've done. I want you to know where I'm living right now. People take pictures of the inside of the houses. They take pictures of everything. I want to know you. I want you to know how I've come up in life. I want you to know how I've arrived. And then you don't realize that the burglars see that also. Come on up in here. Everybody that it may so be our cobra shy. Those that have no good intentions about what you're showing on social media, they are now privy also to what you're putting out there. They see exactly where you live. They see your children. Every time you post pictures about your children, if there's a kidnapper if there is a person that a pedophile a pedophile knows oh yeah well i gotta go pick up pookie car pookie get out of school at three o'clock and pookie goes to a uh, bentwood elementary and they let out about okay and so now this pedof this pedophile here now knows exactly what your schedule is and knows exactly how long i'm running behind y'all on social media I, I gotta go pick up my child but let me post it before i go and i'm praying that my child will still be out there waiting on me at the school so now the pedophile knows exactly you're running behind so guess what now they can go pick up the child mom says she's running behind mom says she's has on a so and so and so and so because he looked at you on social media mom wore this this morning right yes she did okay your mom with the blue dress come on up in here and she works at so and so and so and so. She told me to come pick you up because she's running behind schedule. So your child hears something familiar. Your child feels as if, okay, well, this person knows my mom. They're telling me what mom wore to work this morning. They're telling me where mom works at. So I'm going to feel comfortable in getting into the car with them. And so we set up the, come on, we go right into the preset trap that Satan has for us, the scandal on that I alluded to earlier this morning. And so it's already there. He baited you in. He lured you in and you bought the bait. 
You bought the bait. You fell into the trap because now we want to be accepted. This culture that we're in right now, we want to be a part of the fastest growing commodities in life. We want to be a part of those followers. We want to be a part of branding ourselves. We want to be a part of all of those reality, social uh, reality shows on television. We all want to buy into this reality that everybody now can be important. Everybody now has a social status in society. Everybody now can be important. And so we buy into the lie. I found, I listened to a young girl, I listened to a young girl, uh, and uh, she was on one of these social, on one of these reality shows. And during the time she was on there, I guess she was branding herself, I guess she was doing whatever they asked her to do at that time. And she was talking about how detrimental her role was, amen, uh, how detrimental her role was during that time on social media, on social, on social, on, uh, on, on, on the reality show. And so she said, well, there are certain cuts that they show, uh, and you know they make them do certain things. They give them certain scripted parts of it, but they want you to come to a place where they give them that alcohol and they feed them the alcohol. And I mean, they just show out when they get that liquor get all turned up. And so, that, don't you think they know that? Don't you think they know as many of those social events they send you to, send to all of those different countries, and they're they're vacationing, but they want you to really act up so their ratings can go up. And she talked about how they degraded her. She talked about how. They painted such a different picture about her, but that wasn't the real her. Well, I, I beg to differ at that time because I'm not going to let social media, now I'm not going to let anybody else antagonize me to the, antagonize me to the place where I'm not going to be me. Maybe per adventure there was a part of you that wanted the fame and the fortune, and maybe per adventure there was a part of you that wanted that aspect, that it was that platform that was going to give you at that time, not knowing that that brand that you were putting out there then is going to hurt you in the, in the future. What you're doing now is not going to help your future. Amen, somebody. If you're now painted as a hoodlum, you're now painted as a cursor, you're now painted as a party person, a vixen, you're now painted as this one that nobody gets along with. Whatever it is that you're putting out there at that time, you're branding yourself. And so now you're doing what? Now you're putting yourself in a position that they look at you as such and they're going to label you as such. But when you try to pull away from that reality show, reality is what it is. This is what you presented. This is what we see of you. And this is what we believe of you. And so now she said, it's hard for me to rebrand myself because when I was on this show this is who they thought I was and so now when other uh, activities come around they don't invite me to them I don't get invitations for this because they don't take you as a serious person they take you as that person that you branded yourself was the cursing person y'all ain't gonna talk to me this morning prayer line family the loud mouth person that one that was promiscuous that one was that was drinking that one that was a fighter that one was, that was there and so this is who you've been branded as and so it is what it is see now the devil had a, a scandal on for this particular person as well she said I went to a HBCU college she said, I came from a two-parent family. I came from a strong, structured environment. But when I went to this reality television, the things that we did in, in certain situations, they'll cut back and they don't show the positive. You know the enemy's going to always accentuate on the negative. His job is to do what? Remember, we told you. Satan's job is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so whatever it is that you were branding yourself as good, you're never going to be seen as that. Your social medias, amen, make such an impact on your employers. When you feel that you want to be gainfully employed, the first thing they do now, they go to your Facebook page. The first thing they do now, they see exactly who you're following, who's your followers, what are you doing, all your activities you're putting on there, the people putting on there about them getting high, sitting up there smoking weed. Y'all ain't going to like me this morning, uh, telling how much blunt you smoked and how, you, how high you got. I was going to get a job till I got high, until I got high. I was going to go to, but till I got high. Until I got high. And so don't you think they see those things and you think that you're going to be an employable person now? You think they're going to look at you? And then guess what? Even uh, your local law enforcement looks at them as well. I've never seen so many crazy criminals in my life. Amen. You do all of these heinous things, do all the things that break the law, put it right on social media and think somebody's not going to knock at your door. And I think that's acceptable behavior of this body of Christ. Hallelujah. And the people ourselves. And it's Christians, y'all. I'm not just talking about the world itself. It's so many Christians that bought into this lie as well. We want to be validated. We want to be accepted. We want to be important. We still got that peer pressure that we had when we wanted to be king and queen from from queens. 
Amen, somebody. We're still in that mindset. We're still in that place now that we've got to be accepted by society. So now because I was not prom queen, because I was not prom king, then I'm going to build myself. Amen, somebody. I'm going to build my brand now. You didn't accept me in high school, so guess what? I'm going to be accepted by more than those in the high school. That's the mindset that is seemingly that people have on social media. That's the mindset that they now they I'm going to build myself to a place where you didn't accept me, so I'm going to make sure that everybody else accepts what I present to them now. So what is that fiber that's missing on the inside of you? What is that thing that somebody did not validate on the inside of you? What is the affirmation of the confirmation that you need in your life to let you know that you are more than a conqueror? Well, I've come to tell you this morning, precious heart, that you are more than a conqueror. I've come to tell you this morning that greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. The world that you see it now, the manipulated forces of Satan, the things that he has sent now as a social media diadem, it is not always the best thing for you. Don't put yourself out there like that. Don't sell yourself short. Don't cheapen yourself and don't let society brand you into that which God never intended for you to be. God let you understand that you've been grafted in. You've been bought in, whether you, amen somebody, whether you've been accepted by social media, whether you've ever been accepted by your friends. You have a kingdom society now. Yes, God. A people that we belong to right now, uh, whether they like it or not, you now have the name of Christ. You have the name of God. You've got God on your side. You've got favor on your side. Wealth and riches are in your house. Shall I revelate in this prayer line? He will withhold no good thing from you. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. You have now been bought into a besobra cry, into a new kingdom, a new kingdomship, and a new ownership. So if nobody ever follows you, if nobody ever likes your page, if nobody ever invites you to the next company tea party, if nobody ever invites you to any social media aspect, if you never ever go to reality television, if you never ever get the, the name in lights, amen? Amen, somebody. Know that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And if you're not sober outside, if your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that's enough to validate you for the rest of your life. It's enough to solidify who you are in Jesus Christ. It's enough to let you know that you've got a foundation in God. You've got an anchor in God. If nobody accepts you, if nobody wants to hear from you, know that God, he said, I'm a very present help in the time of trouble. He's a shelter in the time of storm. So we're in this culture now. In the culture now where everybody wants to be accepted. <clears throat> I got my brand. I got to be accepted. This is who I am because they did it. We're still in the same proverbial position of trying to keep up with the Joneses. Man, the Joneses failed a long time ago. Don't y'all know that the Joneses went bankrupt? Don't you know that? We're still trying to become the Smiths and the Joneses, and their, their, their houses are torn down. Their homes are broken apart. So you need to build a brand on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'll make your enemies be at peace with you. Uh, the gifts and God, God's gifts, all the perfect gifts come from heaven above. So we've got to read the word of God to find ourselves. We got to read the word of God to know exactly who we are. The landmark that we're going to make in society right now, it's not going to come to acceptance of those. The Bible says that you're in the world, but you're not of the world. The Bible says, how can two walk together lest they agree? He said, come out from amongst them and be ye holy for I am holy. I'm not telling you not to do social media at all. What I'm telling you is not to allow social media to define for who you are. Don't you allow social media to tell who you are. Amen. If, if, if you never ever get the acceptance that everybody else is getting. If you never get the popularity that everybody else is getting, know that you have now been branded by the Lord Jesus Christ and he has accepted you, your flaws. He's accepted you with your character flaws. He's accepted you with your inroads and your encroachments. Then he gives us time to get it right. God gives us ample opportunity, prayer line family, to get it right each and every day. He said, I daily load you with my benefits. I daily load you. So it means that we don't have to still pull from the wells of living water from yesterday or yesteryear. He gives us a new and a fresh each and every day. If your social media never puts you a place where you're going to get a paycheck from YouTube, you never get a paycheck from Facebook, you never get a paycheck from Snapchat, don't worry about that. Don't concern yourself about that. Concentrate on those things whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, 
whatsoever things are pure, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, to think on these things, forgetting those things which are behind. Amen. It, it used to be a time when you were in high school that you wanted that acceptance. It used to be a time when you were under peer pressure that you needed that acceptance. It used to be at that time when you needed validation. You needed for somebody to come and watch you. You needed for somebody to be there for you. God is that very present help in the time of trouble right now. We have reconditioned our mind. We have reprogrammed our mind not to want to fit in this world. Hallelujah. The world is not going to afford a believer anything but hardship and pain. He's come to steal, to kill, and destroy. His main objective is to wear out the saints of God. So the way that social media works for them of the world is of the world. It should not work the same for us. Our main objective and our main forces should be for this thing to be a positive in our life and not a negative. It's not a place where you vent. It's not a place where you tell somebody off. It's not a place where you come out of your face. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Uh, jaw jacking. Amen. Them soup coolers going to where you're offending people. It's not the objective of the Christian. What would Jesus do? If Jesus was here right now and Jesus had a Facebook page, what do you think he'd be doing? What do you think that Jesus would do with his Facebook page? Hmm. What would he do? Well, Paul said, I could come all things to all men that I may win some to Christ. And so there are certain boundaries that he's just not going to cross. There are certain lines that he's not going to cross, but then he's going to have to go in those places to pull them out. He's going to have to present this gospel to those that have deaf and ears. Amen. I, I told you all before, I don't believe that everybody has not heard about Jesus. I don't know for a fact. I don't believe that everybody's not heard about Jesus, but I believe in some aspects of it, they have not heard the truth about Jesus. He said, it's the truth that sets you free. So I don't believe the truth has been really exposed in a way in which the gospel has been preached, uh, affirming uh, who Jesus is in the entire world. I believe that's why Jesus hasn't come back yet. Social media is a tool to make sure that those places that people are in can now reach them from coast to coast, from, go from global to global. The social media is the best thing that ever happened. You satellite you the best thing that could ever happen to get the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, around the world. It is also a way for you to, to, to do things that you want to do in life that you wouldn't have an opportunity to do uh, had you not had it. Uh, just like free television now. We did television in Atlanta for four years, but we have to pay for that. Amen. Don't you know that there's a price to pay for these videos? These things aren't as free as it appears to be to everyone. There's nobody going to give you anything for free just like that. There's some type of a price to pay for it. We don't know where it's coming from. We don't know who's paying it. But we do know that there are sponsors in order for these videos to come eight minutes each and every day, and it's not coming out of your pocket. Somebody's being paid from some kind of way. So you got to make sure, hallelujah, that you don't sell your soul over to the devil in order for you to get a message across. You got to make sure that you in Cobra style, that you don't compromise your values in the Lord Jesus Christ to be validated by others. You got to make sure that whatever this thing is, God, I'm only utilizing it for what it's worth. I don't buy into it. Come on, I'm not going to be a part of it. I'm not affiliated with it. I have no association with it. I only present to that which was presented to me as a gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the same way when some people say that candles are not supposed to be burnt in your home, that candles are supposed to be conjured up spirits and stuff like that. But I love my fragrances, y'all. Come on. It was one time I was about to get rid of every candle in my house. I said, well, Lord God, you know, I, I, I don't want any candles if that's the wrong. Those are for those people. I don't burn candles for, for uh, seances or for whatever uh, spiritual incantations from the dark side. I like the fragrances. I like the way my house smells. So I tell God, whatever this thing had been intended to be as of God, I detach myself from that assignment. I disassociate myself from that assignment and that thing will not manifest in my home. You will not manifest. I take no partnership I take no ownership. I cut that thing to the root, the seed, and the core, and I decree that this is not the reason, neither will it manifest itself in such a way. The only thing that you will manifest is, is a fragrance, is a smell, and to make my house smell good. So you've got to know, yes, Holy Ghost, you've got to know how to disassociate yourself from the very intents of Satan. If Satan now has come into social media, if he's come in now that where he wants to make sure that he is the most uh, definite point in this thing now, that he is the one, the prima face of evidence of social media, then you've got to let him know, I will utilize social media, but you won't manipulate me. You won't use me, and I won't buy into your lie that you want to present something other than the gospel other than what god intended for me to be on social media and so now you got the young ladies with all the stuff hanging out you got men uh sending you pictures of their body parts i say oh my god are you serious are you serious but that's okay they let all that foolishness and that filthy stuff they'll let that send through your messenger they'll let that come on your pages and stuff but you preach a message 
Delete that. Get rid of that. Isn't it strange, y'all? Isn't it strange? So how can you monitor that, but you can't monitor that other garbage? How can you make sure that this word doesn't come across? Amen, somebody. You're, you're monitoring the word, but you don't monitor that gossip and that garbage. You got to get rid of that. Get rid of that. We're living in that time. Social media can make you or break you. Reality television can make you or break you. There was a man by the name of Andy Warhol, and he said it years and years ago. He said, the time is going to come when everybody's going to have 15 minutes of fame. And I believe we're in that time right now. A 15 minutes of fame. We didn't know the social media was going to do that it did. We didn't know it was going to take on the genre that it did. We didn't know at that time that we were going to have reality television, that they were going to make offers to brand people in so many different ways that everything in life is important. Everybody wants to see what's going on with everybody else's life. And now I want to be a part of that. Uh, the preachers of L.A., y'all ain't going to talk to me this morning. Uh, whatever they're bought into, that everybody buys into this, and everybody's got to be a part of that. It doesn't necessarily have to be a negative. It really doesn't. It doesn't necessarily have to be a negative because we need that type of a platform, but it's what we do with the platform when we get it. Jesus said, and if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Your ratings are going to be there if you lift up the name of Jesus. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Mary, Mary, all of those that had these platforms. John Gray, come on up in here. The Christians that got the platform, Jesus said, and if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. I'm looking for somebody that's going to preach the unadulterated truth of the gospel on their social media, preach the unadulterated word of God on their reality televisions and still stay on because they know that the producers are not going to let them do that because they feel that no, nobody wants to hear that. No, we can't go that way. So we as Christians, we're going to need enough money ourselves to finance our own productions. Amen, somebody. You be the executive producer. You be the one that calls a shot. You be the high baller. Y'all ain't going to talk to me, shot caller. You be the one that says the yay or the nays and this is where it's going to go or else we won't go to production point blank period and so now because we bought into the lie that people don't want to hear about jesus then they'll skirt around it you and, and, and those that are christians that are on there i don't see them uh, uh going in and, and, and really really actually showing jesus i show them cut up like the rest of them i show them acting a fool like the rest of them i show them because reality tv sells that reality that realistic approach that people are in struggles people are mean people are hateful people are uh, come on alcoholics people are liars people are fussing and fighting and all of that stuff sells and so they buy into that lie why can't you just show a good couple Amen. Why can't you show a happy couple? Why can't somebody get along? Why can't there be a peaceful home on the television? Why can't we put something realistically uh, better than always tragedies and, 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 and hardships and pains and miseries? Looking at television on yesterday, <clears throat> it's a new, some kind of program coming on. It tells you exactly what it is. And, and one cut, it shows two ladies kissing each other. And another cut, it shows two men kissing each other. Then it tells you a newness, a new a new nation of evil. That's what the the, uh, the tag says on it. A new nation of evil. So it's letting you know what it is before it even comes on television. It's telling you now, we're going to introduce you to something new, uh, 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 evil on this nation. We're going to now present to you something. And then guess what? Their ratings are going to go up. Because people want to see that. They want to buy into that. Utilize what God has given you for a better and not for a worse. Utilize the tools that God has given us in this social media. Uh, stop venting. Uh, stop ranting. Stop telling people off. Amen. That, that's not a place as a Christian. Not as a Christian. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He said, I will repay whom I want to repay. Don't, don't give them little pot shots and, and don't let the devil occupy your mind like that. Me and my daughter, we always say, devil, you're going to have to pay me to think about you. You can't live up in here rent free. Where's my paycheck to think about you? Come on. We've got to know at, at, at the time that we're in right now, your life is too valuable for God and to God to let the enemy pull you into that trap. Your life and where we are right now, your sanctification, the Bible said God had to speed up time in order for us to be saved. Read your Bible. He said, I had to speed up the time in order for those that are saved to be saved, in order for the saint for us to be saved. Because he knows the process that the devil is going to use if he would carry this thing out as far as he wanted life to expand, probably none of us would make heaven our home. So he said, I got to speed up the time for the saints of God. But then he also says in the book of Thessalonians, he says that judgment begins in the house of God. He said, if my judgment began with the saints of God, then wherefore thou for those that are not saved, where are they going to fit in? Where the scarcely ones that are just holding on, where are they going to fit in? So we have to not brand ourselves as the world does. Neither do we look at ourselves as the way the world does. We've got to see ourselves through the eyes of God. Know that we've been validated by God. Know that we've been affirmed by God. We've already been, been confirmed as to who we are in Christ Jesus. And don't let anybody make you make a decision you never thought of for yourself. You're venting, you're ranting, you're raving. 
You didn't think about that till you heard somebody else's response. Till you looked at social media and said, oh, they said that. Oh, no. Oh, they coming at me like that. Well, then watch this. And then you go to da, 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 da. Read it and then delete it. Read it and delete it. You don't always have to have an opinion about everything. You don't always have to have an opinion about everything. Sometimes you just need to get it out. Sometimes you just need to feel that thing of telling somebody off and get it out your spirit. Okay, you got it out. But delete that. You don't have to send that. You don't have to send it. So then that way, come on, people will now never know what you're going to say because you never had a response. You never allow somebody to pull you down to their level. Let nobody pull you down to their level. Amen. You be more intelligent than them. You be bigger than them. You be better than them. You be the greater forces of heaven behind you so the enemy won't pull you into that trap. People will never know what you think until you open your mouth. They don't know what you think until you open your mouth. My Bible say when you find them a a fool, you leave them as a fool. Amen. This is what the word of God said. He said, when you find them to be a fool, you leave them as a fool. So you don't pull yourself down <clears throat> into foolish places where they go to. You don't pull yourself down to the place where in the lowly place that they're in in life. You build yourself up in your most holy faith and you stay there. Hold a position in who you are in Christ Jesus and don't let the enemy come in. Social media, a culture of eroticism. Is intentions were bad? Probably not. Intentions were what they went the way they went now. Probably weren't his intentions when they invented them. They probably didn't think that. They probably thought that they were going to build some type of an empire that everybody showed pictures of when they used to uh, be in high school together. And, and I haven't seen Cookie. I haven't seen Cud and Cookie in so many years. I haven't seen uh, Cud and Susu in so many years. And so now we get on this social media and we type in their names and we pull them up and Hey, girl, how you doing? Hey, hey oh, this the boy my first little love in high school. Ooh. Yeah, it was all good. But whenever the devil comes in, and guess what happens? He's got that trap, that preset trap that's waiting for those that's going to be lured in, pulled in, suckered in, and he'll yank you right there to that place. And that what was good and now turns into evil. Uh, we always tell you that everything is not bad. It's, it's the timing of the thing. That which was supposed to be right becomes the wrong thing at the wrong timing. And so maybe sometimes we just have to look at a thing and, and do, I, do I even address this now? Do I say anything about it now or do I just leave it alone? Sometimes just leave that thing alone. Don't have an opinion in the heated moment. Don't have an opinion when you're all hyped up. Don't have an opinion when you're all mad and, and your adrenaline is flowing and your blood is rushing and all you got to give them a piece of your mind. No, no, you can't. You can't afford to give nobody a piece of your mind. That's the part that you need. That's the most vital, important part that you need right there. You don't give a person a piece of your mind and what you going to operate out on. Come on. <clears throat> know the traps that the enemy has for us. Know exactly how he operates in his life. Then do just the opposite thing of what he wants you to do. Do just the opposite. Ignore them. Pay them no attention. Don't respond. Don't clap back. Don't be thirsty. Don't be shade. Don't throw shade. All that stuff y'all say. Don't, don't throw no shade at nobody. Come on. You need that for yourself. And you're going to come in a time where the sun's going to be beating down on you and you gave somebody your shade. You're going to need that for yourself. Amen. You, you don't do that. Don't become those things to them. And don't let them pull you out of your place that God has gravitated you to. We remember we were in front of the elevator. And remember when we're always on the bottom floor, God doesn't want us to stay there. He doesn't want us to keep that position in life all the time. So he puts you in front of the elevator. He tells you to do what? To press that button so that you can uh, exert yourself in new positions in life, that you can now excel in new places in life, that you can go to a higher place in God and a higher spiritual dimension. Your mindset should not be the same as you were when you first got saved. You should not be that person any longer. There should be now an impartation of God's presence and God's power on your life. So much so that I don't have to be that person on social media. I don't have to be that one that's venting and ranting and raving. I don't have to be that one that's fussing and fighting. It. Oh, they didn't talk about my, my, my man. No, they didn't talk about, come on. In that high school, y'all, in that high school, have we really still in that same position of life that we're in now? Are we still there? Are we still arguing about men? Are we still sharing men? Come on, y'all. Are we still in that place where she don't like me and I don't like her? Come on, life is too short and life is too important for us to be that type of a person. But we're not there any longer. The greater forces of heaven back us up. The greater one is on the inside. He said, I've given you everything pertaining to life and godliness. Read your Bible. Peter tells us that. Peter says God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. You got those things. Don't let social media dictate to you what you don't have. Don't let that peer pressure dictate to you what you don't have that they've got. And you don't know what they had to go through to get what they've got either. 
do you? The Bible says, don't look at those things that men have because they're temporary. If they're not in Christ Jesus, those things will not last. Uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce and all those things that those people have, if they don't come to the Lord Jesus Christ, everything that they've got is going to be taken away as a vapor. Amen, somebody. Read your Bible. Those things will not last. Only what you do for Christ Jesus will last. So don't let social media, don't let the Kardashians of the gospel make you all feel that you've got to do what they do in order to survive. If they don't open their mouth and declare Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, in hell will they lift up their eyes. This is what the Bible says. Don't you be influenced by what they're doing. Don't you be influenced by trying to be them. Don't you be influenced by what they're saying, their brand, the way that they do it. Well, the little girl, Kylie, and this one, they, she got this and she's got that. And look at all the stuff that they've got to go along with it as well don't buy into the lies of the devil don't brand yourself in a place that you don't want to be labeled as or tagged as know that your name is written in the lamb's book of life know that this day forth from this day forth i will not be a competitive person i will not be one that has to now fit in i will not be one that has to be branded to a place where i'm, I'm competitive and I, I i'm on social media and i'm a social buffet and this is this is my brand and this is my life and this is what i'm going to do Okay, then so you're going to sell out. You're going to be a sellout. Is that what you want? You want to be a sellout just to fit in this world? This world that we know it is dying and everything in it according to the word of God. This world is dying and everything in it according to the word of God. Only what you do for Christ will last. Let, let's get to a place now where we don't let the devil make us make a decision that we never thought of for ourselves. Let's get to a place right now that for God I live and for God I die. Let's get to a position in life right now that this gospel must be preached. He said that you're the called out one. You've been separated from this world. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. You are the ecclesia, the called out ones. You're the one that are uniquely different. You're the ones that can make your own brand according to the word of God, according to who Jesus Christ is, not according to the standards of this world, not according to the God of the air, the God of the atmosphere, the God of the cosmos, not according to him, but it's according to the God of the utmost, the utmost God that's on this earth. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you this morning for your love, God. Father, we thank you for your kindness. You said to let your people know that this social media buffet thing that has gone rampant now on this earth, that has taken people into places that uh, con men, uh, they've gone scandalous, uh, uh, they've gone to be uh, uh, scammers, uh, they've gone to places, Father, that they do great exploits, they expose them, their bodies, they expose those things on the inside of them that they probably would not have ever done had they not been presented to this social media. So I repent, first of all, God, for those that have been lured into that scandal on, that preset trap that Satan had, those very intents of their heart that they never even knew that was there until this platform was presented to them. I, I repent, Father, and I say have mercy on their souls, Father. God, the impartation that Satan has, the influence on this earth now to make everyone feel that they're in competition with others and, and feel that they have to be branded in a certain way and they've got to be labeled and tagged in a certain way. I, I apologize to you this morning, God, for those that have bought into that lie. And so, Father, I pray now that that anointing that destroys the yokes of competition, the, the anointing that destroys those yokes of not fitting in and not living up to uh, a certain standard that they feel that they've not been accepted in society. I, I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would cleanse them and wash them. And, Father, I pray now that you would create in all of us a clean heart and renew the right spirit. I pray now that it's your presence and your power that the manipulated forces of hell that have come in to divide and conquer, that have come in into lifestyles of this social media God and, and made it such a platform for those that want to have more, feeding into those spirits that have got to have more, I've got to have more acceptance, got to have more money, got to have a better status in society, I've got to have my name written in, in, in life. All of those things, Father, I, we come against it by the blood of Jesus by the blood of Jesus. Let the sincerity of our hearts show forth this day, God. Let them know that they are a people of a different fold, that we don't fit into this uh, evolutionary status that the, that the devil himself has placed on this earth right now, this culture of eroticism, where I've got to have it by any means. I want it right now, and I must have it. Those attainable things, Father, we release them from that spirit. We release them from the scandal on spirit, that preset trap that Satan has for those to lure them in, to let them know that this is the only way you're going to make it. This is the only way that you're going to thrive. This is the only way that you're going to be successful. You said it's the mind of Christ. It's the mind of Christ. Whatsoever things we desire, when we pray, if we believe them, then we shall have them. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 
and all of these things shall be added unto you, that you, God, shall supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory, which are in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you right now that these have been uh, mind washed from the enemy. Now you now cleanse them with the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, those things, those fragmented pieces of our minds and the molestations of this society itself, Father, by buying into these lies, these manipulative forces of hell, we, we cleanse your hearts and cleanse your minds from those things now. Create in us a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew the right spirit. And then let the strength of the kingdom of God be made manifest on this earth. Father, we heard the footmen, uh, we heard the footmen uh, marching, God. We heard the feet of the soldiers marching, God, the footmen going forth, God. So we thank you right now that you're building yourself a people, that you're rebranding them and you're labeling them and you're tagging them as they're belonging to you, God, as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are disciplined by the Holy Spirit. Your sheep shall know your voice and not another voice will they follow. So we thank you that it's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God that rests upon these thy servants. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us, mold us and make us creating us that clean heart and renew that right spirit. Then let them know that we've already been accepted into the royal priesthood of God, that we've been accepted as kingdom citizens in the most high God, that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And Jesus knew so much that he went away ahead of us to prepare a place for us, that where he is, that we may be so also. So we thank you that we have a clean, fresh start this morning on this Miracle Monday, that there's a culture of eroticism, that these things, Father, now that have been presented to us, we are not those people. We are not one that's pushing our ways up to the top. We're not ones that's just going to level the playing grounds. We're not one, Father, that'll manipulate, tear down uh, anything that comes in our way. We're gnawing and scratching and biting and fighting. We're not those people. We're not those people. You said to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay that which I want to repay. So we thank you, Father, that as Christians, as Christians, God, that name the name of Jesus, that we're disciplined by the power of the Spirit of God. We're the ones, Father, that will allow you to be God in our lives. We're the ones, Father, that will allow you to show forth the light of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. And not another will we follow. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. That's the God that we serve, and that's the God that we will follow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we pray that the Holy Spirit has truly ministered to those this morning on our prophetic prayer line, for those that are on our social media aspect. And so I pray that you hear me with your spirit and not your flesh. I'm not condemning social media. I'm not downing social media. I'm only saying what we put on social media, that what we put out there. Don't you know that life and death is in the power of your tongue? Life and death is in the power of your tongue. You can decree a thing and it shall be established. We speak to things that are not as though they were. And so sometimes when we begin to shout at people on social media, we're hurting other people that we never intended to hurt. Then they're getting interpretation of us that you don't want them to have. I told you the young lady said that she was on reality television. They branded her to be this and this and this. But uh, you, 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 you can only do what you want to do. And if you don't want to do that, then you don't be a part of that. She walked away from it. She quit the job. She walked away. She said, because I'm not going to let them put me out there as that particular person. But now, first impression is lasting impression. Now we got an impression of you now. So now you got to take a whole lot to take that away from uh, that you've already put out there. Be careful what we're putting out there. Be careful what we are labeling ourselves as, what we're allowing the enemy to tag us as, and allow God to re-tag you. Allow God to reassociate you with who you really are. A tag, you're it, you're it, tag, you're it. You're the newness of Christ. You're the power of God and the Holy Spirit rests upon you this day now and forevermore in Jesus' name we pray. Well, this is the devil busting, the demon chasing, the woman, the wisdom, and the word, Dr. Loretta B. Harris. And we are changing a nation through prayer, prophetic prayer line, each and every day, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Please share the page. <clears throat> Please share the page if you would. We're not trying to brand ourselves. We're trying to get the gospel throughout the entire world. Amen. We're not trying to have all those uh, followers. We want followers of Jesus Christ. We want for them to follow me as I follow him. And we bless God for you today. We'll see you tomorrow morning on Fat Tuesday. We say God's grace and mercy be upon you till we meet again. Live fully and live freely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You all be encouraged so very much. We bless God for you once again.